Hey, man. Yeah. Hey, oh, Jared. Thank you. Hey. How's it going? Thanks a lot for coming out. Thanks for the quick response. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's sick. Great to see you. No, I don't think so. We just so. finished recording our like recap, and I was like, oh, let me check my my DMs. Yeah, uh, just there is fine, I think. Yeah, yeah, anywhere you want. What's up, everybody? We got Jared Palmer in the house today. We're at GitHub Universe. Always oh, yeah, needs to pull him in. Jared just popped in, and we're stoked to talk to him. Uh, you recently started a job at Microsoft slash GitHub and are, are fixing all the problems. Is what's going on? I don't know about all the problems. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, yeah I'm tr- then putting. Do my best. Yeah. Uh, I'm f- like, it's like day 13, 14. I was going to say, okay. yeah, it feels like it's fresh. Yeah, it's fresh. It's yeah. fresh. So I'm still acclimating. Okay. Uh, but there's a lot of shared DNA between, uh, previously I was at Vercel. Yeah. Um, and Guillermo, the CEO of Vercel, and Nat Friedman are very close friends. And Nat used to be the, the CEO of GitHub. And so it's a lot there. It's a lot of corporate DNA. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that has permeated through the evolution of the companies. And so, and there's been a lot of uh, former GitHubers that were, that came to Vercel. Yeah. Uh, and so that's, it's, it's, there's hints of similarity, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Still getting acclimated. Totally. That's awesome. So you're the creator of V0, right? I am. I'm, I'm curious to, to get your thought on just workflow in general with, with this type of stuff. So developers are listening to this podcast. We saw all these new tools be announced today. Um, you obviously have a lot of experience in the like V0, where it's like it happens in the browser, and then at some point you you bring that out of there. Like, what are your thoughts on like what the developer workflow will look like with all these agents? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that we need to do a better job as a community building out like continuity, if mm-hmm. you will, right? Yeah. Remember, if it still feels like. Um, remember before it still feels like maybe I'm going to date myself in high school when you worked on a word, we didn't really have like Dropbox, right? Yeah. And like the pre Dropbox days. Yeah. I know that it's like dating myself there, but it does kind of feel like that where these yeah. are so isolated yeah. and they're not fluid. There's no continuity. Your flow state gets broken. You, you start one task and you go off, you, you kind of forget. And yeah. It's called final dot JS. Drag and drop. Underscore, underscore, final, final. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. So, so anyway, so I think that in the future and ideally one of the things I'm focused on is bringing continuity across all of the, the, the Microsoft, if you will, touch points, which is like, and that's what's been so important about this reorganization around the core AI unit, which is Visual Studio, VS Code, GitHub, and Azure AI Foundry. Okay. Um, and parts of Azure too. And the idea here is that like we should be working really tightly with the VS Code team at GitHub. And we should be making handoff super seamless. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, and so when you start tasks in one, you should be able to pick them up in, on the other and vice versa. And you're seeing that today. And the other thing is that model choice is real. Um, yeah. And I think developers want that choice because they always want to use the bleeding edge. And so that's one of the announcements we had today that we're bringing third-party models to, to GitHub Copilot and GitHub Agent HQ, which is the new control plane from which you can kick off kind of background tasks and work through PRs and other things like yeah. that. So I'm really excited about that future. And then um, I don't know if you caught it in the in the keynote. If you do start a task in, Ag- in Agent HQ or on GitHub, you can open that in VS Code. Yeah, yeah that that it's was the killer thing slick. to me. I think that was yeah. the most encouraging new feature shown today. Just because, like we were saying, it's like so many times when those responses come back, if it's unusable at that point, you're like, okay, now I'm forking you're stuck. it. Yeah, 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 let me yeah. scrap this or thing. Or I scrap it entirely. Let me type yeah, in yeah. the box again and let it go right. run for 15 minutes and then come back to it. And yeah, you, totally. you lose that flow state. Totally. Uh, one of the things that I did testing that feature um, so last week, Next.js announced version 16. Yep. Very exciting. You guys probably covered it. If you didn't, whatever. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was excited. Scott's a huge excited. Next fan. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, so <laughs> the first thing I did was, and I thought this was pretty cool, because one of the cool things about HQ is the prompt is actually set up to create PRs, mm-hmm. which is a little different than like the VS Code super interactive, fast twitch, if you will, like cursor. Yeah. Uh, not background age, but, but like cursor sidebar situation. Yeah. Uh, the prompt that I gave was research the latest Next.js 16 release and upgrade guide, then run all the code mods mm-hmm. and upgrade my my site. Mm-hmm. And it just did it. Yeah. And like, and it created five different commits. It created a draft PR and it did take, I think it took, a, I don't know, it took like 10 minutes. But that's okay. Nah. But it did it. And then it ran all the, it not only did that, it ran all five code mods, 
migrated from NextLint to the new ESLint CLI, and it verified it migrated to Turbo Pack, changed configuration, validated the builds, even included like now built in nine seconds of Turbo Pack. Anyway, I, I guess to a point where it was like I don't think a year ago we were at this point. Oh yeah, no, no yeah, yeah, a year ago all. we were sitting in this podcast booth talking about like better tab completions or totally. tab completion you know? at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, kind of amazing, kidding, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, <laughs> anyway, the, to your point though. If that PR is like 80% ready yeah. and we don't have an escape hatch, yeah. that's just like so much product pressure on us to like, mm. right? So this new open in VS code fe feature, I'm very bullish on because it just keeps you in the flow, right? Yeah. We, it's kind of like horseshoes and hand grenades. We only need to get a little, we kind of need to get close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me personally, I think that's the thing I'll probably end up using the most beyond bringing in Claude or any of these things, because I was always assigning things to Copilot in, out of issues right now. Uh, but being able to, like you said, model choice is important. And now it's it's less of, hey, I'm assigning it to Copilot and I'm assigning it to what I'm used to. I'm assigning it to what my flow is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is great. I think that's awesome. Yeah. And the, being able to use Claude Code or Codex or whatever agent you want, like you could talk about kind of the background of, of behind that as well, being having some choice. Yeah, I think it's important that we... From from my short time yeah, I was gonna at, say at yeah, the thirteen company. days, yeah, thirteen yeah. days, yeah. But obviously, like I talked to um, to Satya before joining, and we had talked about some of the these these, these big decisions, right, for the platform, yeah. about whether we should uh, like allow third parties and stuff like that. And we both agreed. I think it seems like this past at least like three to six months have shown that like giving model choice is what developers want. It is ultimately leads to the best product. And, yeah. you know, if you're talking about GitHub's mission, which is to empower developers to build awesome stuff, well then like, yeah, they should have model choice. Yeah. It's kind of a no brainer. Um, and we'll do well if we stay true to the community yeah. and focus on developers and everything else will take care of itself. Yeah. Oh, that's great. That's great. So once you got hired, you went on a tear on Twitter. Just I'm, I'm, being yeah, like, I've, yeah. been, I've been throwing heaters. Yeah, like, it, yes. <laughs> what, can, what can we fix? Yeah. How can we do it? So <laughs> yeah. uh, are you just like coming in and fixing all the rendering issues or like you have like a pretty, not aggressive, but like you're, no you're good at yeah, getting yeah, yeah. shit done, right? Yeah. Obviously, Vercel was, yes. was like that as well. Yeah. Um, thank you. Um, <laughs> I, a couple of things. I think that feedback is a gift. Yeah. And we've got such passionate uh, developers in this community and they have such awesome opinions yeah. that like sometimes you just got to ask, like, how can yeah. we make GitHub pull I don't think I don't know of any time anybody from GitHub has asked that on X. Like, how do we make GitHub pull requests better? Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. but like, how else will you know? Right. And it turns out that the top uh, ask was stack, stack diffs. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Which I kind of knew was coming. But I was I was um, <laughs> and I did I did uh, ask. I can get into that in a second, but I'll answer that after. But. No, you know, I've got a lot to learn. It's my, you know, 13th, 14th day here. Yeah. Um, and GitHub is a, um, a very, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's like a legendary product. Let me say that. Yeah. It's an institution. Right. It's an institution. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so we're not totally. going to, we're not going to, so change is coming in the sense that like, we want to make sure that we are evolving with the times and building the best possible developer experience we can. Yeah. And I think that's going to also change because just like we discussed just a couple of minutes ago, like we went from autocomplete to like <laughs> if an e a, almost like a coworker, right? yeah, yeah, robots yeah, yeah, going yeah. off yeah. and doing right. work for or an, you. an intern. Let's call it an intern. Fire it off from your phone, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. just different. So like, and and also it's going to require a different workflow, and so some of the stuff needs to evolve with that that new workflow. And it, we're committed to like seeing that vision through. Okay. And so I think about what does it look like? What is what is a pull request in twenty twenty seven? Yeah, and I don't know the answer yet. But we, I'm pretty sure GitHub is going to have to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to look. It might look a little bit different. Might you know? look a little bit different, and that's exciting. And I think that's what we're we're driving and focusing. If that makes sense. That's cool. And then also to the performance side, like this is something that's near and dear to my heart. And so we're also working on that too. That's been in the works. Um, but I'm really excited about the team and the stuff that I've seen so far. Mm -hmm. So yeah, but now you get to show up and take credit, right? Because that's your, <laughs> yeah. your thing. Right. right? right. Yeah. Show up and take credit. Right, I mean, yeah. yeah, exactly. I contributed to not as much as you could expect for, <laughs> for this, but I'm very happy and proud of the team. They put in a lot of effort. A lot of the stuff you're seeing today was started months and months ago, obviously. Yeah. And so happy to cheerlead, but also like deferential to the team. Like, yeah. like they, they, they kick butt. All right. Last question. You need to build something. What's your interface? Where are you starting? Are you starting in in V zero in a browser? Are you uh, npm scaffolding something? Are what you are we kicking building? off an agent? What are we building? You're building a podcast player website. 
<laughs> Wes is asking for personal reasons here. He yeah. wants to know where to start. What, what, no, what, I'm just what, curious. What, what, are, like, what are you guys? What would you use right now? I, for me, I, I would npm scaffold out something so that I have my like basics. You yeah. know, like I have them in place. Maybe mm -hmm. get Vite and everything running. Um, and then would you I'd, do that by hand? I, I would. Pr I usually I do. do that by hand because yeah. way too often it picks the wrong tech. And would you like install and, chat, like um, Shatsian or, or like yeah, like, yeah? Tailwind, I install like all the, the depths the that I decide I want. Yeah. Um, which I know was was part of the announcements today as well, which is planning mode. Once I have that, I'll I head into like the agent tab and start kind of going back and forth with with agents, and it scaffolds it out, and I kind of talk back and forth to it. So that's my UI. But I'm always curious about like the, I do that because like I'm a I, I was a developer before this stuff, and that's what I'm comfortable <laughs> with. But sure. I'm also curious, like, people who are not necessarily, or not that you're not a developer, obviously you are, but people who are, are new to this stuff, like, what does their UI look like? And I'm always curious to see what people what about you tackle. Yeah. yeah. What would you start with? Yeah, I use Svelte for everything. So I start with, like, SV. Um, there's a number of options, boilerplates and stuff that get going. Is SV the, the Svelte CLI? Yeah, yeah. And so you can even get database and all that stuff going oh, right awesome. from there. Yeah. Um, Shout and, out to Rich. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And by the Svelte time you're done with that, the, the CLI, you have oh, pretty much everything, like ORM, everything configured, database. You have uh, your containers all set up. And just from there, that's when I'll hit. Uh, and go into a planning mode, or I, I'm a little bit more on the uh, um, over uh, over engineer on the like spec driven mode mm -hmm. myself. So I'll start getting into specs um, and then go from there. But yeah, yeah. The uh, so to answer the podcast question, I think I would do the same thing. I think I would start out with like my I would scaffold yeah an XJS app biased um <laughs> slightly biased i would and but you know ssr it's important yeah i would get like um uh, like biome set up and like like everything like to yeah. that level yeah that makes yeah. sense yeah. i would yeah. install shad cn i probably would pre-install the sub subset of the components that i thought would be useful in the ui i actually did this by the way this is a specific question um <laughs> for, for the un, the old undefined side yeah, I, actually, yeah. I use that sometimes um does like a uh sort of demo thing and like I actually migrated it was it hadn't touched the site in so long so it was in Gatsby mm. and I did the migration to next and what I did was I think the Tailwind guys did a, a a podcast template in one of their um oh yeah which I bought but then uh I copied that thing into a folder Tailwind UI yeah yeah, yeah. I copied that yeah. into a folder I downloaded a folder and then I was like yo look at this folder but one thing I'll give as a tip for those who are prompting doesn't matter what which one of these agents you use a trick that um, actually picked this up from the Claude Code team that works really, really well is to prompt before, even before you either write a spec yeah. or actually go to execute is to ask the model to do some research. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's so powerful. It's been powerful for me. And even like getting into like database design or totally. those types of things to pre research. Like go pre research this. Yeah. Re like, get a sense of my code, even that, those two prompts, go research this and mm -hmm. get a sense of the code base or paste in a bunch of links and get context. Packing that context can be so powerful. And then either, you know, write a plan. There are also some special keywords, by the way, for a lot of these models. I don't know if you guys know this. Like, no. Mm -hmm. Hit okay, so them. have you heard of UltraThink? Uh, yes. Okay, so you can say UltraThink and that forces, mm -hmm. usually force, at least in the anthropic models, will force like high reasoning. Okay. Another sort of secret tip I'll share, which I've found useful, some like emergent behavior, is if you ask these models to add logs uh, and assert statements, which is like low key, like not many people use these days, but add assert statements and logs to maximize debugability. Yeah. That will, that That's can sometimes, key. that can be very helpful when you go to like hit it out. And the third one that I found interesting, and this has helped me with planning, when I'm getting it to write a spec, I'll often put that in a markdown file, like to do or plan yep. and sort of ephemeral. And I think we need to develop as a community like a better way of doing oh, this. It's absolutely like so kind of yeah. out there. Yeah. But like maybe that's beautiful, but it's kind of it just seems like not right. Like it's oh, it seems like I've like redone my own custom, you know, spec flow like eight times. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So yeah, there's some there's like some spec flow. Anyway, figuring it out. But let's just put it in a markdown file. Yeah. But then what I do is I ask it to create a rubric for grading the spec or this plan, then grade it, yeah. then revise it. Yeah. And that extra step of like it thinking through the rubric and yeah. then self-evaluating, I've found to be quite useful. Mm. But 
it can go overboard and so it ends up like i've probably seen this too it's like week one to two like oh, week three to four absolutely. like i haven't figured out how to get it to stop Dude. planning like 12 weeks oh, yeah. like, what is that about <laughs> we did like a vibe vibe like, code what off. is that what is that yeah, yeah. And how do i get it out yeah and yeah. that was mine was like, like yeah week one down. yes <laughs> yeah we were seeing who could get it done the fastest like oh can we get this oh, done in, get in 10 all? minutes oh my gosh and then it was like okay week one i'm like no, no. I, like <laughs> why does it do that i don't uh, know stop in that and like the the yapping at the end, yeah, the where yapping. it tells you what it did. You gotta oh. tell it, stop yapping. Stop yeah. yapping. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. give me the code. It's so funny, but yeah. So <laughs> if I could figure out how to not have it make a twelve week plan, yeah, yeah. Right. that would be no great. Kidding. And yeah. I'm too lazy to like correct it. Yeah, no, you're just like yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Maybe okay. it's good. I don't know. But so that, that's my some of my tips. The rubric thing is helpful. Uh, Ultra think is helpful. And then I would, uh, and then from there. What I'm really excited about now is with some of these, uh, I don't think Cloud Code can do this yet, but I think, uh, but I know that uh, VS Code can do this. I think um, I saw something, Cursor is going to have this very soon too, which is the ability to have like N attempts or variants at the mm. same prompt. Oh, yeah. Just, you know, throw throw money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just run them all away in like like branches or something like that. I think they, yeah. 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 Work trees. Um, I think that's probably, I mean, yeah, like let's just, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 right. yeah, 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 yeah,